Hi everyone. This today I've got a chipboard tag that I want to use. This one's from Prima. And as you can see, I've chosen a few molded pieces that I pre-molded before today's uh, video. Uh, these I used paper clay. This one I believe is the uh, perma stone. But uh, as you can see, some of them cracked apart when I had them stored in my little box. But that's not a problem. I'm going to use them anyway because um, by the time we add all of our layers, you won't be able to notice any difference. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is uh, glue them down to the tag the way I want them. And I've already kind of decided before I started the video how I want them to be on the tag. Uh, something along this line. And you just want to sort of place them where they need to be so that make sure that they'll all fit. And I was thinking about keeping this section, this this actually belongs to this piece, but I'm thinking about um, putting something in the center here. So I'm going to separate it, keep it separated. It was broken anyway, so um, I'm using that to my advantage. So I'm going to use my uh, quick grab tacky glue and I'll place all of these uh, down in pretty much in this position and uh, after I get that done I'll come back and um, we'll get started on the next step. Use fast grab tacky glue to adhere the pieces to the chipboard and then let them dry. Spread the crackled texture paste with a spatula in the open areas. If you spread a thick and thin layer, you will get different crackled results. Normally, I don't recommend speed drying crackle paste because most of them won't crackle, but this particular one will. I've got three sizes of art pebbles to use for a really cool texture. First, I add a random pool of glue. Then I add the biggest pebbles first. Next, I add the next smaller size and, and I end by filling in the open areas with the texture sand. Turn the tag and do the same thing on the opposite side of the molded pieces. I'm using my spatula to nudge some of those tiny pebbles back into the glue. I'm going to be using my Vivid Ultra Metallics in Siam White and Burnt Umber. First, I want to cover everything with a wash of water and the Siam White. I let each layer of color dry before adding my next layer. This keeps the colors pure. In other words, it keeps them from blending together or worse yet, getting muddy. Next, I'm adding drops of the Burnt Umber Vivid directly onto the tag and I will wet my brush to spread the color. Once again, I'm covering everything with this layer. I'll be using Bolivian Blue Vivid to add a color wash over the molded pieces. It doesn't matter if it runs onto the tag because it will be covered up later. Next I'm going to mix some Teal Zircon Vivid with the Bolivian Blue and I'm not going to be very particular about blending it together. Then I'll repeat the color wash over the molded pieces just as I did before. These two colors are so beautiful together, they remind me of a mermaid. Now 
Next I'm going to make a wash with the True Metals Autumn Flame and flood the background with the water and color. I allowed the paint mixture to puddle up against the molded pieces for a bit of a rusty look. By the way, if it has True Metals on the name, it's because it actually does have metal pieces in the paint. Pretty cool, huh? Next, I'm going to make a wash with the China Black Vivid and cover the entire background with the wash. This will allow the color to sink into the cracks and crevices, giving a really aged appearance. Then before the paint dries, I took a baby wipe and removed most of the paint, leaving just the right amount, which is whatever you want. Next, I used that same baby wipe and picked up some of the China Black Vivid that was left on my mat to distress the edges of the tag. I added more water to my paint puddle when necessary to help spread the paint along the edges. Then I grabbed my teal Zircon Vivid again and thinned it with water. Still using that same dirty baby wipe, I picked up the tiniest amount of the color to lightly dab it over the molded pieces, just to brighten them again. Next I grabbed one of my DIY embellishments that I made in a previous video, and I will link to it. And I also grabbed some very thin aqua colored wire. I wrapped the wire around the two metal pieces in a figure eight fashion, just for interest. I wanted to hide those wire ends under that top embellishment, and so I had to use my paper piercer to try and push them underneath there. Then I found this metal butterfly and cameo in my stash, so I glued the pieces together and set them aside to dry. I needed to add something between the space where the molded pieces meet to support my focal piece, so I found these 3D glue dots in my stash. You could of course simply use scraps of cardboard or foam dots to serve the same purpose. Once I got the space level, I used my dry my dries clear glue to adhere my focal piece over the molded pieces. Once I got that in place, I glued my cameo and butterfly on top. I'll post a complete list of supplies in the description area below the video. For more inspiration, you can find me on these social media links. If you enjoyed today's project video, please give me a thumbs up, and I hope you will consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, and always take time to play.